I got my start in music probably when I was maybe five, six years old. We lived in the Oil Weathers Housing Projects in East St. Louis. And there was my mother, myself, three of my four sisters, and my nephew. And I remember my aunt used to play blues and jazz music all the time on the radio, like all the time. Um, some of the people that I remember listening to were Lou Rawls, definitely Lou Rawls, because she loved that kind of soulful music. And so I would hear that music and, you know, I didn't really think anything of it. It was just a part of the atmosphere at the time. And so that's when I was indoctrinated into it. But, you know, years later, it would have a role in my life. There was a young lady that I knew in high school, and she was like totally into Prince. You know, she was listening to the music all the time. And she actually introduced me to his lyrics by saying, hey, you know, I've got this new Prince album. Come over and we can read the lyrics in the album. And like, okay, you know, it was my friend, why not? So I would come over and listen to the records, read the lyrics, and it's just like, wow, this is some deep stuff. So that's really how I got introduced to music per se, not even on the music level, but just on the lyrical level. One of the things that I guess maybe I learned to do um, in listening to all that old school music was sing because I love to sing. And, you know, by the time I got to college, which was for me, Illinois State University, I thought I could sing. You know, I really thought I could sing. I ran for homecoming king in high school and my talent was to sing. So when I got to college, there was this Black History Month performance and I'll never forget it. Um, I was going to sing a duo with a young lady named Marlo. She was from Chicago and we were going to sing the um, Black National Anthem. Now, I could sing, but I didn't know that Marlo could sing. I mean, <laughs> sing, sing, sing. And so when we got on stage together, I was like highly confident, you know, all my friends were there. And when the music started and I opened my mouth and she opened my mouth and her mouth, she sang me under the table. And I was just like, wow, I was so embarrassed. And that was such an eye-opening moment for me that when I got off stage, my friends were like, Kev, I thought you could sing. I said, yeah, I thought I could sing too until I heard her, but man, that blew me away. It was, it was fun, it was definitely memorable, but that made me take my first actual vocal training class. And so I have to thank her for thoroughly embarrassing me, but that was a step for me um, going in the right direction. Two of my absolute favorite artists would have to be Prince and Babyface. Um, Prince definitely because of that early lyrical influence on me. Um, again, when I read through some of the lyrics that he'd written, I mean, it was just crazy, out of the box thinking at the time. Now, you know, of course, coming up on some of the old school music, you know, I didn't really see how it influenced the things that he had written or composed at the time, but as I look back now, I can see that influence, but he was just saying things that nobody else was saying in ways that nobody else was thinking to say them, very poetic, and that just really intrigued me. And I think that was one of the things that stuck with me um, as I followed his career. It's like when he released an album, I knew that something ingenious was going to be said, something that you could count on being poetic and, and great at the same time. Now, when it came to Babyface, that guy was just an all around great writer. Um, some of the things that he'd written and some of the artists that he'd written for, I mean, it just, you know, blows you away from one end of the spectrum to the other. Not only a great songwriter, but a great performer. Um, and of course, you know, when he was a solo act and with The Deal and, you know, all these other groups that he had written for and was a part of after Seven, you know, the ladies loved him. So, you know, that helped too. It's like, hey, if I can be like Babyface, then hey, maybe I'll get the ladies too. Maybe I can be a good songwriter too. But style, very diverse. He's written for some of the best artists out there. Um, even today, he continues to do great work. And I had a chance to see him about two or three years ago in concert. Still got it. Music is important to me because it has become so much a part of my life that I couldn't even imagine who I would be right now without it. You have to understand that this is not something that I even asked for 
When I was growing up, I was a visual artist. I was the kid that could draw, and that's what people looked to me as. When I went to college, I majored in art. Music was just an aside. And so now music has become what I live and breathe for. It's a passion of mine. In the same way that art used to be a passion for me, music has kind of taken over and I wouldn't say feel that slot, but it has become a partner in my life with art. And so that now one is just like the other and they're right by my side, left side and right side walking along with me. Um, there was a time I remember that I used to wake up in the middle of the night writing song lyrics, you know, night after night. I just couldn't turn this off. And so, you know, when something is stuck in your head like that, it's how can you separate yourself from it? I just wouldn't even know where to begin. With the recording project that we're working on now, um, Pearls, this was something that really just started off as a notion. You know, I, I thought it was possible because at some point I had the lyrics and I had the music in my head even though I couldn't effectively produce the music the way I can now. And so in gathering this group of people around me, I was really hoping that what I heard in my mind would somehow come to fruition. This is actually a journey that began several years ago. Um, Nikki and Chelsea were two of the first people to join. Cameo was even a part of that original group, and so she rejoined later on. But I couldn't imagine being where I am now, having gone this far to this level of completion without the support of the people that have been around me. Um, some people highlight the songwriters, the musicians, the producers, and you know, that's cool for people that think that they can do it themselves, but you know, I'm of the mindset that no man is an island. I would not have gotten this far without the people's support. I definitely wouldn't have. Um, family around me, the people that have come to help contribute their talents to the music that I'm working on and trying to make real, it would all still be on paper were it not for their dedication and their talent. And there is no way that I could ever really truly thank them for it. But, you know, I'm going to try. All I can say is look out for 45 Final and each of the people here individually. I'm working with some very talented people. I know that they have a passion for what they are doing. Together, we have become a force to be reckoned with, for sure. And I know that we're going to do some great things. Now, what level we'll ascend to? I guess that's still left to be determined, but if we never get there, it will not be due to lack of effort. It'll just be because nobody else could hear what we were doing.